In this video, I will walk you through a classic related rates problem about a slipping ladder. A ladder that is 25 feet long is leaning against the wall of a house. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a constant rate of two feet per second. And the other end of the ladder slides down the wall. Part A, how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall at the moment the ladder's base is seven feet from the wall. Include units. Note, how fast is asking for speed, not velocity. Um, just real quick, when they say speed, not velocity, the main thing is we're going to ignore any signs. If it turns out to be negative, we're just going to write it as a positive number because speed is the absolute value of velocity. They did not give us any variables in this problem, so we need to make up some of our own. Let's let y be the height of the ladder on the wall, and we will let x be the distance of the base of the ladder from the wall. In other words, the bottom of this triangle is x, and the vertical side of the triangle is y. Now let's make a list of the facts that we are given. Let's start here. The base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a constant rate of two feet per second. So which one of these variables are we talking about? We're talking about the base of the ladder being pulled away from the wall. So we're talking about the X value, but we are talking about the rate of change of the X value. In other words, dx dt. And we are told that the rate of change of this x value is 2 feet per second. I'm going to leave this as a positive 2 feet per second because the base of the ladder is sliding away from the house, which would be the positive x direction. How fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall at the moment that the base of the ladder is seven feet from the wall? So this is actually two different pieces of information. Well, one of them is the, the uh, quantity that we are being asked to find, which is also good to write down. So how fast is the top of the ladder moving down the wall? We are talking about the Y value all right, because now we're talking about the height of the ladder as it moves. So we are being asked to find the rate of change of this Y value. How fast is the top of the ladder moving? So we need to find dy dt when the base is seven feet from the wall. Well, remember, the distance from the wall to the base is x. So we are finding dy dt when x is equal to 7, or I should say 7 feet. Once you make a list of the facts that you are given and the thing that you are trying to find, next you need to find a relationship between the facts that you are given. So I see that we have uh, the change in x and the change in y, the value of x, we need a relationship between x and y. In this case, the relationship between x and y is pretty easy to see. Ever since you were in geometry class, you couldn't wait to do the Pythagorean theorem. So you know it's going to be x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 squared. So let's go ahead and differentiate both sides of the equation with respect to t. So we can make dx dt and dy dt appear. The derivative of the first term will be 2x. But since we are differentiating with respect to t, and this is an x, we have to do the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inner function which in this case is just dx dt. The derivative of the next term will be 2y, and uh, just like on the previous term, we have to do the chain rule 
and multiply by dy dt. The derivative of a constant is 0. I'm noticing that we have too many variables. Remember, we are trying to find dy dt. So uh, we have some things that we can substitute in, but we need to replace every variable except for dy dt. So what do we have? Uh, we have dx dt, so that takes care of, of this variable. And we know that x is equal to 7, so that takes care of this. But we still have this variable of y that we are not able to replace with anything. We have to do something about that. Let's solve this equation for y so that we can get an expression for y involving x that we can then substitute for y. That way we will only have x's, fewer variables. So subtracting x squared from both sides, we get uh, y squared is equal to 25 squared minus x squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we have y equals the square root of 25 squared minus x squared. We are not going to do plus or minus because y is a length which can only be positive. Let's substitute this expression for y in the other equation. So here is the equation that we had before, and here is the equation after we make the substitution for y. This is an equation that we should be able to solve. Let's go ahead and substitute the facts that we are given. dx dt is 2, so we're going to substitute 2 in right here. And x is 7 in this scenario, so we're going to put 7 in right here. And we will also put it right here. So now we have this. Remember, we are trying to solve for dy dt. If we go ahead and multiply this out, because it's so simple, um, this is going to be 28. And then we need to subtract this from both sides. So we're going to get a negative 28 on the right. So we're going to get this. In order to get dy dt by itself, I need to divide both sides of the equation by all of this. So this is going to end up under the negative 28. So we have this expression for dy dt, which is what we were supposed to find. Well, almost. Technically, uh, dy dt is the velocity of the top of the ladder, with this negative sign indicating that the top of the ladder is heading down the wall. We are not interested in the velocity right now, only the speed, which means we are going to disregard this negative sign when we write the final answer. Don't forget the units, which will be feet per second. This is an acceptable answer for a free response question, but what if this was a multiple choice question or something? Let's go ahead and simplify. I think it'll be more satisfying anyway. So quick calculations here. The 2 goes into the 28 and would make that a 14. And uh, 25 squared is 625. 625 minus 49 is 576. And the square root of 576 is 24. And this reduces down to 7 over 12. So if this was a multiple choice test, you would find a speed of 7 twelfths feet per second among those answer choices. Part B, consider the triangle formed by the side of the house, the ladder, and the ground. Kabam! Find the rate at which the area of the triangle is changing when the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall. So we are being asked to find the rate of change of the area. In other words, we need to find dA dt when the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall, which means that once again x is equal to 7. Don't forget this yellow statement. In the setup of the problem, we are given that the base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a constant rate 
of 2 feet per second, which means that dx dt is equal to 2 feet per second. Since we are being asked to find the rate of change of the area, we will of course need an equation for area. We know that the area of a triangle is given by 1 half base times height. So uh, using the variables that we have established, that would be 1 half x times y. Let's go ahead and differentiate both sides of this equation so we can make dA dt and dx dt appear. So the derivative of the left side will just be dA dt. For the right hand side, we're going to have to use the product rule. Uh, I'm just going to leave this one half out in the front of parentheses. So I'm going to go ahead and do my product rule with the x and the y. So first we take the derivative of x, which will be dx dt. And we leave the second factor alone. So we're just going to leave that as y. Then we put a plus and we go through it again. The second time through, we leave the first factor alone, so that's just x. But we multiply by the derivative of the second factor. So now we will have dy dt. So this is simply the product rule. We are trying to find dA dt, which is already on the left side of the equation. But on the right side of the equation, we have four variables. We need to substitute something for all of these. Uh, I feel like we're going to be a little short. Let's see what we have so far. x is equal to 7. So we know we can substitute 7 for, for this variable. dx dt is 2. So I can put a 2 right here. So we're going to have to find y somehow. Let's use the Pythagorean theorem. We already know that uh, at this moment, x is equal to 7. So the Pythagorean theorem gives us x squared plus y squared is equal to 25 squared. So that's going to be 7 squared plus y squared is equal to 25 squared. And that is going to be uh, subtracting 7 squared from both sides. We have y squared is equal to 25 squared minus 7 squared. Taking the square root of both sides, we have the square root of 25 squared minus 7 squared. Don't worry, I will simplify this later. For right now, I just want to show you that you don't have to. So. We have one more variable that we have to replace, and that's dy dt. But the conditions in part b are the same as the conditions in part a. So we can use the value of dy dt that we found in part a. So this ugly expression simplified down to 7 over 12. But here we took away the negative sign because they wanted the speed. But uh, I'm going to put it back to negative 7 over 12 for a pure dy dt. So let's go ahead and substitute these values for these four variables. For the units, we are talking about the change in area divided by the change in time. So area will be square feet, and the time was given in seconds. So feet squared per second. I purposefully left this very ugly to show you that if you are stuck without a calculator and you're not comfortable making all the calculations, um, as long as it is a free response question, you're allowed to leave it just like this. In fact, maybe you should if you're not comfortable because if you make a mistake during the simplification process, you will actually lose points. However, if you did need to simplify this, perhaps it's a multiple choice question, then this is what you would have to do. Uh, let's see, so 25 squared is 625. 7 squared is 49. 625 minus 49 is 576. So we have the square root of 576. 
Um, I'm going to go ahead and put minus because I see that we have a positive times a negative, which is a negative, and this will be 49 over 12. So we have this so far. But um, the square root of 576 is 24. So this is really 2 times 24, which is 48. So we're going to have 1 half uh, 48 minus 49 over 12. We need like denominators in order to put these together. So this is like over 1. So you multiply by 12 over 12, and you get the following. 1 half times 576 over 12 minus 49 over 12. But that equals 527 over 12 times 1 half, which is 527 over 24. So here is the simplified version of the answer. Part C. Consider the angle between the ladder and the ground. Find the rate at which this angle is changing at the moment when the ladder's base is 7 feet from the wall. Include units. Let's let theta equal the angle between the ladder and the ground. So the angle we are looking for is right here. Now let's make a list of all of the facts that we know. Starting with the fact that the ladder's base is 7 feet from the wall, just like in the previous parts. So we know x is 7 feet. Don't forget that back in the original setup of the problem, we were told that the base of the ladder is pulled away from the wall at a constant rate of 2 feet per second. In other words, the rate of change of x is 2 feet per second. So we know that dx dt is 2 feet per second. Also remember that back in part a, we were asked to find dy dt when the base of the ladder is 7 feet from the wall, and we found that the rate of change was negative 7 over 12. So these are the facts that we know. So what are we trying to find again? It says find the rate at which the angle is changing. In other words, we need to find d theta dt. Next, we need a relationship connecting theta with x or y. From the perspective of theta, this side over here is the opposite side. Uh, this side where the x is, is the adjacent side, and 25 is the hypotenuse. So if I want a relationship between theta and x, or theta and y, I can use sine, cosine, or tangent. So um, I'm going to use the x. So I could use adjacent over hypotenuse. That's going to be the cosine function. So we can say that cosine theta will equal x over 25. And that's our relationship. To make it easier to follow what I'm doing on the next step, I'm going to rewrite this as cosine theta is equal to 1 25th x. So it's time for some implicit differentiation. Taking the derivative of cosine, I get negative sine, negative sine theta. However, I am taking the derivative with respect to t. So this is not a matching variable, so I need to do the chain rule and multiply by the derivative of the inner function d theta dt. When I take the derivative of 1 25th x, I can just bring down the 1 25th and then take the derivative of x, which is just dx dt. Since I'm trying to find d theta dt, I need to substitute the value for all other variables. Let's check the list and see what we've got. We know that dx dt is equal to 2 feet per second, so I can definitely substitute 2 right here. But what about sine theta? I don't see that on the list, and somehow we need to find a value to substitute. Let me think. I need to find sine theta. I know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse. 
So looking at this picture, I know that sine theta will equal y over 25. If only I knew what y was. Wait a minute. In part b, we found the value of y using the Pythagorean theorem. Let's go ahead and simplify. This would be the square root of 625 minus 49. So that will be the square root of 576. So y is equal to 24. So that means sine theta is equal to 24 over 25. By the way, you could save yourself a little time and effort if you memorize a few Pythagorean triples like this one. Um, almost everyone knows about the 3, 4, 5 right triangle, but this is another one, 7, 24, 25. So if you knew this triple, when you saw that x was equal to 7 and the hypotenuse was 25, you knew that the y value would be 24. Anyway, sine is 24 over 25. We will substitute that in right here. So now we have negative 24 over 25 times d theta dt is equal to 1 over 25 times 2. So actually, rather than writing it like this, I'm going to go ahead and put that 2 in the numerator. We still need to get d theta dt by itself. So somehow we need to get rid of negative 24 over 25. I think the most efficient way would be to multiply by the reciprocal of negative 24 over 25. So I'm going to multiply by negative 25 over 24 on both sides. So this way the uh, 24s and 25s cancel each other out and I am left with d theta dt. Uh, the 25s cancel each other out, and we still have that negative sign, so that's going to be negative 2 over 24, which is equal to negative 1 twelfth. Let's not forget the units. Um, we're talking about a change in radians divided by the change in time. So this is going to be radians per second. So that's the final answer.